Michelle Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about bugs. When I'm out backpacking, I actually really enjoy seeing bugs. I like to video them and take pictures of them. Well, most of them because I honestly cannot stand mosquitoes and I wish all of them would disappear. Yes. But even spiders and ticks and stinging insects, those are just so cool to me. But that doesn't mean that I necessarily want them on me. So let's talk about how to protect ourselves from the bugs that are actually harmful to us while still getting out and enjoying the trail. There are some general tips for avoiding bugs, including wearing long sleeve shirts and pants. This is actually one of the most effective ways to make sure you're not being eaten up by bugs. And if you wear lighter colors, they tend to be a little cooler than darker colors. And also, if you have a tick crawling up your pant leg and you've got on light colored britches instead of dark colored britches, you're gonna be able to see it a little bit easier anyway. Wearing a bug net over your face, potentially some bug netting for your shelters. You can also tuck your pants legs into your socks or if you wear gaiters, I assume it would kind of function the same way. But this is just to prevent bugs from hitting your shoes and then climbing up your socks and inside your pants. You can also apply bug repellent, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. And then as soon as you get home from being out on trail, if you go hop in the shower and go ahead and give yourself a good clean in just to make sure you've got any bugs off of you that might be on you but not attached yet, like ticks, for example, or maybe it could even help with chiggers, no seams, etc. But these are all rules to kind of help with bugs in general, including the ones that annoy you and the ones that can harm you. There are some additional steps that you can take to prevent yourself from being bitten by a more harmful type of bug like ticks, stinging insects, mosquitoes, and spiders. I think the worst thing about ticks is that you don't always feel them crawling on you and biting you. And then you go to pull your britches down to go pee and whoop, there it is on your leg. One common way to prevent being bitten by a tick is to use permethrin. You can buy clothes that are already pre-treated with permethrin like Ex Officio's Bugs Away line. Apparently with the Bugs Away clothing, you can get 70 washings out of it and they tell you to launder it like normal, like the regular detergent that you would use. You can also bleach them. And I thought that was pretty cool. You can pay a service like Insect Shield to do it for you. So you send in your clothing, they'll do it for you and send it back. Or you can buy things like Sawyer's Permethrin to treat at home yourself. As long as you treat your clothing like suggested, then it is said to be safe for humans. It won't have any smell to it or any kind of texture, and you can just wear your clothing like normal. You can also treat your gear and footwear with permethrin. As long as you're not putting it onto your skin, then you should be okay. You can pair permethrin with a bug repellent that you apply to your skin, like DEET or picaridin. With DEET, you have to be a little careful because it can harm your gear, like your trekking pole grips or your tent. But picaridin is not harmful to your gear and it supposedly does a better job repelling flies, so that's an alternative choice to DEET. Other ways to prevent contact with ticks is to kind of think about where they are. Ticks tend to be in more high grassy or brushy areas. So if you see some tall grass, it looks nice. You might want to just view it from a distance and don't necessarily go lounge in it. Also, they're more likely to be in shady areas instead of full sun areas. While backpacking, you should do a daily tick check because if you find a tick on you, it's better to do so in the first 24 hours because that way your likelihood of getting some kind of disease from them is reduced. If you do everything you can to avoid ticks and you still happen to find one on you, don't freak out, just get a pair of tweezers and get as close to the skin as you can and grasp the tick. And then you want to pull away from your skin with an even steady pressure. So you don't want to like snatch or twist or wiggle anything like that. Then you want to clean the area as best you can on trail. If you have hand sanitizer, if you do happen to have soap and water, you can save the tick and take it to a public health lab for inspection if needed. And then finally, you want to keep a check on the area and make sure that you're not getting a red ring around the site of the bat. If you're experiencing any flu-like symptoms or facial paralysis or joint pain, then you definitely want to get to a doctor as soon as possible. Next up are mosquitoes. And I think that this is the only thing in existence that I have run into on the trail that I absolutely cannot stand anything about it. And I can find no appreciation whatsoever. 
But nevertheless, mosquitoes are not only pesky, but they can also transmit diseases to humans. Some of the ways that they can be deterred are also with permethrin and DEET or picaridin, like I mentioned with ticks. You can also avoid mosquitoes by choosing to hike in an area that is not a great habitat for mosquitoes. So avoid stagnant water sources. Also, if you go to open, sunny, kind of breezy areas, mosquitoes seem to have issues with wind and also drier air as opposed to damp, moist, stagnant areas. But who says that you always want to be hiking in open, breezy, sunny areas? Maybe sometimes you do want to be in the heart of the woods, or maybe sometimes there are still clouds of mosquitoes in open, dry areas like in Wyoming while you're trying to hitchhike on the side of the road. So the best line of defense that I've found against mosquitoes, in addition to long sleeve shirts and long pants, is rain gear. Even when I had shorts on, rain gear helped keep mosquitoes from biting me. And I will also tell you that tight fitting clothing is easier for them to bite through, so be aware of that. A lot of times misery is all about mindset, so if you change your perspective a little bit, it might help. And one of the things that I really like to do when I'm in a cloud of mosquitoes is just allow them to get on me. And then as soon as I can't take it anymore and they're just like, a bunch of mosquitoes all around me. I have what is called a mosquito massacre and I just slap myself all over and kill as many as I can and then rejoice in the death of all of the mosquitoes in the mosquito massacre. But at some point in your backpacking days I'm sure you will experience a mosquito bite and they do itch and they're annoying but the best thing to do is to not scratch them because then you can just open your leg and increase your chance of infection in that spot. You can get these little sticks for bug bites and I know a lot of times people use them with their children but adults can use them too and they actually contain an antiseptic in there that'll help reduce the itchiness and the painfulness of the bite and also kind of keep that area clean and reduce risk of infection. And those little bite sticks will also help with chiggers wasps and ticks. Next up are stinging insects. Bees are normally pretty chill unless you step on them or put your hand on them, but wasps are just jerks. So at some point in your backpacking experiences, you're probably gonna get stung. The best thing that you can do is be aware of your surroundings. So if you're going to lay down and take a nap in a field of flowers, you might be putting yourself at risk of being stung. Also, if you're sitting on a log and you notice some wasps flying around, then keep in mind that they could have a nest nearby. Be aware that bright colors attract stinging insects because if it's the same kind of color as a flower, then you might be inviting them to you. If you are stung, then check the area to see if a stinger is still in your skin, and if so, you want to get it out immediately. You might not want to take the time to fumble around for tweezers or another tool because a stinger can continue to inject venom into you for up to three minutes. So whatever you have to do, use your fingernail and just go ahead and scrape that stinger out of your skin. You can take an oral antihistamine like Benadryl, also apply a cool compress. You may not have ice with you on the trail, but you can take a bandana and dip it into a cool water source and then apply it to the sting area. If you know that you are allergic to stinging insect stings, then you probably should carry an EpiPen with you on trail. You can keep an EpiPen cool and warmer temperatures in a little insulated pouch like the wallets they have on allergyapparel.com. I'm sure there are all sorts of different brands and if anybody watching this has one that they recommend that you know works well for you, please leave that in the comments because it could help somebody else. Make sure that if you're backpacking with other people, they know how to use the EpiPen in case you're stung and you can't do it yourself. Make sure you take an oral antihistamine like Benadryl, and then if it becomes an emergency, make sure you have a way to call for help. So either a personal locator beacon, a spot device, or an in-reach device if you don't have cell service where you're gonna be backpacking. And finally, through all of that panic and fuss, try to stay as calm as possible. Next up are spiders, and I think that these are just such cool little critters, but Again, that doesn't mean that I necessarily want them on me. So the way that I 
suggest people avoid spiders on trail is kind of do the same thing you would to avoid snakes. So you don't want to reach your hand into a dark hole like in the end of a log or under a pile of rocks or anywhere that you can't see what's on the other side. When you go to take a break, you want to be mindful of your surroundings. What are you leaning your back against? Where are you putting your arm? Again, basically the things that you would do to avoid a snake bite. Finally, if you're going down the trail in the early morning hours or late evening hours, you're probably going to get several spider webs to the face. And it probably won't take you long to figure this out, but if you pick up a branch or you hold up your trekking pole, kind of like your Indiana Jones going into a dark cave and just hold it out in front of you, then you'll allow those spider webs to hit the stick or your trekking pole first instead of your face. If you think you've been bitten by a spider or you know you have, you might see two little holes on the area of the bite. And what you wanna do is clean that area as good as possible, again, using hand sanitizer or if you have some kind of camp soap. You wanna apply a cool compress, Again, might want to take a bandana and put it in a cold water source and put it on the bat area. Elevating the wound can help. And then if you are pretty sure it's a spider that might be harmful to you, so like a black widow or a brown recluse, then you definitely want to start taking note if you notice any symptoms. If you do start noticing symptoms like that, you want to get to a doctor as soon as possible. And if you have the spider with you, that can definitely help in identification and a treatment plan. I just want to add a note here and say, give spiders a little bit of a break though. I know a lot of folks who they'll see a spider on trail and they immediately want to crush it. But just remember that they take out a lot of the other pest type bugs that we don't like having on us. And for the most part, spiders just kind of want to do their own thing and they don't want you in their space either. I know some of y'all watching just probably really hate bugs in general and are wondering how could you ever get out there and spend several days in bug infested land. And I will tell you that you get acclimated to it. I was not a fan of roaches at all. I would run and get away from them as fast as possible. But after six months on the Appalachian Trail, I actually got so used to them that now if there was one that crawled on my leg, I would probably just pick it up with my hand and throw it away. So I never thought that that would be possible. So I'm just saying if you get out there and start acclimating, at some point there's a shift that I feel like happens in the mindset where you think, this is my existence now and there's really nothing I can do about this, so you just learn to deal with it. And as a final note, I know that there are a lot of you who do not like having pesticides on your body or on your gear, and there are different essential oils or natural remedies for some of that, whether it's to prevent being bitten or to use after being bitten. So if y'all have any experience with that, feel free to leave that in the comments below if you think it could help somebody else. There's always a risk associated with getting out in nature, but I think that getting out there and taking that risk, as long as you do it as safely as possible, is much better than staying inside and not enjoying the outdoors. Thank y'all so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video or the content of this channel, be sure to subscribe before you go. And with that, we will see y'all next time.